All right, I was gonna make a video and it decided to start right now and I guess I have the buttons hit inside. I just blew my intro to my video. But both of these high side and low side were sitting at 49.5 PSI. And this vehicle was driven here. It belongs to a technician here at the body shop complaining the AC is not. This is a Honda Insight. It's 134 refrigerant. It's supposed to have 445 grams. It's a 2020 Honda Insight. So I wanted to see if there was codes because if this vehicle was driven here, outside temperature is 62 degrees, but the high side and low side standing static pressure was 45 PSI, somebody would say the refrigerant is low which would be true that is true if you just drove in the vehicle here that means the engine compartment's hot all the ac lines are hot the refrigerant compressor is hot the interior cabin you probably had the heater on because it was a cool morning so you would think the pressure should be whatever the ambient of the, all the refrigerant lines would be not what the ambient of outside if the ambient of the refrigerant, if underneath the engine hood is 140 degrees, inside the cabin is 85 degrees because you had the heat on high, you would expect to uh, see a minimum of at least somewhere around 80, 85 PSI. Except if the vehicle came into your shop, it was parked all night, it was sitting, it got down to 40 degrees last night, and I timed out here because it's been hooked up more than 15 minutes. Um, if the vehicle sat all night long, then the engine would be cold, all the lines would be cold, it would be down to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and your refrigerant pressure would be somewhere down there in that 40-ish area. Then that would be normal, even if you were completely full with liquid refrigerant, it would still be down in that 40-ish area. So right away when I hooked up, I seen 45 PSI, but I knew this vehicle was just driven here. So red flag number one, red flag number two, not sure if somebody worked on it, but I didn't take video of it before, but there was oil stain off of the cap, off the side, not off the cap. The cap is clean. The inside around the cap is clean. Inside there was no oil, but there was oil dripping down the outside and signs that somebody did gauge up at some time in the life of this vehicle. So of course I did a refrigerant analyzer test on it it's 100 percent pure so i'm not worried about that we do know we're low now if we take a look out it's a honda so we know the condenser or the evaporator are going to leak but this is a clarity on the clarity uh so it's an electric compressor as you can see right here we got electric compressor so there is no clutch to leak so it doesn't give you many choices so we come over here and then as i do the visual of the condenser it's totally dry and if i come down here and i look you're not going to see it all because i'm not going to go out of my way but it's totally dry now i just fooled you for you beginners for you young guys you think uh there's no oil stain it's perfect because it's perfect up here it's perfect down there i could see everything no this is not the condenser that's another sub cooler, a heat exchanger for something else. The condenser is behind that. The condenser is back farther. If we take a look back here, we're gonna slip it in there. It's going through the rack. Do you see that oil stain down in the corner? Okay, now I'm gonna come back out and let you see where I just came from. I came from that crack right there. And the leak is down here, right about there. But if I come over here, and I tilt my camera all the way over to the side, I can see, oh, there's no oil stain there. This fools a lot of guys because there will be a lot of secondary heat exchangers that look like it might be the condenser, but it's not. So he has the typical Honda leaking condenser. Remember you have POE oil in here, extremely hydroscopic. It loves to suck up moisture and turn acidic. And uh, so he's gonna need a condenser, but I did uh do a fault cold you would think it would set a fault look at it, it's at zero psi it's at 63 degree uh 63 psi on the high side zero psi on it's running the compressor is running and but everybody goes wait 
if it only had 45 psi and the temperature was a minimum of 60 some degrees then that means there is zero um liquid refrigerant in the system it's running on vapor only that means the superheat is really high well let's get over to a 134 refrigerant let's grab the low side so we could take a look at the superheat going back to the compressor and let's get this open right right there so we're going to look at the superheat and we got a superheat of 87 ps uh 87 degrees superheat which means the compressor is burning up really hot and because of lack of refrigerant and lack of oil flow now can i get a gauge on the discharge okay i can get my fingers down there the discharge it's probably about 130 degrees that's about it right now but it's only 60 some degrees outside but those electric windings are not receiving cold refrigerant to cool off the electric windings in the three phase high voltage motor and it's getting reduced oil return this is how compressors burn out so i'll see you guys later that was just one look at the superheat and you've been told this lie your whole life that systems have safety systems to stop them from operating when they're low on refrigerant except on high some certain high-end vehicles they have software that will lock out the compressor